Joining us now to talk about the new GDP numbers, the Fed, D.C.'s debt ceiling fight, and the impact on the economy is Ethan Harris, B of A Securities Head of Global Economics, and City Economist Veronica Clark. Veronica and Ethan, thank you very much for joining us, and good morning. Veronica, first to you. Aside from all your other just regular forecasts, how does this debt ceiling debate and this risk of running out of money, how does that factor in or screw up the models? Yeah, I mean, at least in terms of, of how we're thinking about, you know, the upcoming data, you know, what the Fed will be doing in June. I mean, our base case is, is certainly that we can have a resolution on the debt ceiling before then. Um, so hopefully that's in the past. Uh, but it absolutely is adding to uncertainty right now, certainly in the markets. Um, it does add to uncertainty for our, our forecast into 2024. We don't know what a final spending deal will look like. Um, we're not making any assumptions on that yet, um, but it, it does certainly cloud things. Ethan, what do you think? I mean, how, is there a way to say, well, here's our benchmark forecast mm -hmm. on the GDP and the economy, but if there's some kind of default or the government stops paying its bills, then then why? You know, X, Y. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to have a scenario analysis. I mean, we think that they will pass a, a you know an increase in the debt ceiling with some kind of awkward compromise, but it'll only come at the very last second. It seems much too early for a convergence here. Why would they reach a deal now? They've got, you know, another week to go. And these guys can never make a decision uh, quickly. Um, I think it, unless it lasts for a while, unless they violate the debt ceiling for a number of weeks, it probably goes down in history as a blip on the road. Um, and I do think that Steve is right, that the uh, that the... The Hawks and the committee are still really thinking about the possibility of hiking again. If they could just get some of these risk factors aside, there's a real chance yeah. of another rate hike down the road. And this idea that the Fed's going to cut in the second half only makes sense if you're expecting disaster out there. Can they, can, Ethan, can, can the Fed kill inflation without also killing the economy? I don't think you have to kill the economy. You have to wound it. I mean, it would be remarkable if we had, you know, double-digit inflation and there was no consequence. Um, you know, I mean, if we have a very out-of-balance labor market and service sector. You can't get inflation down just by fixing supply chains. That takes care of half of your problem. You've got to get, unfortunately, they let the party go on too long and they have to get the unemployment rate up. Could they be, by some stroke of luck, avoid a recession? Yeah. But is that a, the most likely outcome? No. I think a mild recession is the most likely outcome. Veronica, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. That That is our base case. And it really does come down to, you know, we do believe that the Fed will do what it takes to get inflation down. That is the, the number one you know, job here. Um, we actually are penciling in two more rate hikes in our forecast um, for, for June and July. Um, but that does unfortunately come with a, a mild recession. And, and that's just what is needed to bring inflation back to target. Is there an outlier <clears throat> event or variable, Veronica, in, in your models that, that may change Everything. I mean, what should we be worried about is possibly happening? Yeah, this this year, you know, there's a lot of different stories. It's, it's less clear this year, I think. Um, certainly debt ceiling could be one of those outlier events. Um, you know, more instability in, in the banking sector, although fortunately that seems to have you know, died down recently. Um, there's always, of course, you know, something that can, can go wrong. And I think that's part of why, you know, markets are looking for, you know, possible cuts later this year, or at least, you know, assigning some probability to that. Um, but when we're looking at the you know, actual economic data right now, what seems like the most likely scenario is that you know, we're still running pretty strong activity and with that, still pretty strong inflation. You know, Ethan, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if you heard our conversation with Jim Grant uh, a few minutes ago, but we were talking about, you know, sort of where did this go wrong? Because somebody obviously messed up to get this level of inflation still stimulating. Do you agree that it was just overstimulation, both, you know, fiscally, monetarily, by the Federal Reserve, by the federal government, as the economy was, you know, underlying certain things, booming, and we had a shortage of goods due to port issues. Would you agree that was a, that was where they kind of blew it, or maybe you don't think I they think blew it at that all? The, I think if you look at what happened, um, a lot of the port issues and some of those supply problems were unpredictable, and therefore you can't blame anyone for that. 
But the, the overstimulus of the economy definitely is a big factor here. And it was both the Fed and fiscal authorities. When the economy started to reopen and, uh, you know, it was clear that the vaccine was going to work and all that, clearly you needed to back off dramatically in fiscal stimulus, and it didn't happen. We kept on getting money plowed into the system. The supply chain problems, people forget, weren't just because there were supply issues. They were because there was massive demand for goods by U.S. consumers, and the system couldn't handle all that spending. So you have to blame easy uh, aggregate demand policy by both the Fed um, and, and the Biden administration for a lot of the inflation. And I would put particular blame on the Fed, to tell you the truth. I'm a former Fed uh, employee, and I love the institution. But they're the ones who ultimately are job is to control inflation. And when the Fed didn't respond to the very big fiscal stimulus, record stimulus, yeah. and the rising inflation, um, that was a big policy mistake. Now, they've caught up, and they're doing the right thing now. Uh, but the legacy of that mistake, I think, is the number one story here. Trying, trying to right the wrongs in a very short amount of time as they just continue to stimulate, even if it was clear the economy was booming. It was, it was just, it's going to go down in history as a, as a big footnote.